The Columbia-class ballistic missile submarine is expected to provide several improvements over the Ohio-class submarine for the U.S. Navy. Some of these improvements include enhanced stealth capabilities, increased missile capacity, improved communication and surveillance technology, and overall modernization of the submarine systems. Additionally, the Columbia-class submarines are designed to have a longer service life and are expected to be more cost-effective to operate and maintain compared to the Ohio-class submarines. These advancements are aimed at ensuring the U.S. Navy's strategic deterrence capabilities remain robust and effective. Since the Ohio-class first started being pushed into the water to give international asshats of the red variety moments of pause, the clock has been ticking on their efficacy as a nuclear deterrent. Over the past 40 years, America's varied enemies have had quite a long time to build up a sound profile for various boats in the Ohio cohort. And while Ohio boomers are still arguably the most quiet SLBM haulers in the business, submarine technology has progressed significantly in that time. You think of quiet submarines and you come up with something like the Kilo boats from Russia, which have been gradually updated when new ones are built. Which, optimally, is how submarine warfare should work out. As new technologies are developed, you build them into new submarines. In American procurement, this has been evident in the Virginia class, of which nine more were just recently ordered, and eight of them are Block V, or the fifth iteration of the Virginia design, where each block incorporates new abilities. However, with the design requirements inherent to an SSBN, which include frequent and lengthy patrols while remaining silent under power, being a lot pricier than the smaller Virginia attack boats, the cost of designing and building an entirely new type of boomer has to be offset by how long the class can stay in active service. Changes incorporated into the Columbia's 16 launch tubes for SLBMs. Down from 24 on the Ohio's. Pump jet propulsion that does away with traditional free-spinning propellers, which have always been the acoustic trouble for any submarine. Bladed propellers create cavitation, which is tiny air bubbles forming on the surfaces of each blade, and when those bubbles collapse, they make sound that can travel through the water column to any nearby submarine and give away your position. They also deteriorate the propeller's surfaces over time with pitting. The other problem with spinning propellers is how they're mechanically linked to the boat's power plant, necessitating a long prop shaft that can go out of alignment and create another acoustic signature. Pump jets use electric drives instead of mechanical ones, and this change vastly limits the number of acoustical problems. Columbia's will also be fitted with an upgraded sonar package, the large dome at the front of the boat that is used to listen for other submarines and navigational hazards. And this new version of the large aperture bow system will be able to single out a fish with indigestion 30 miles away. Also included in the build is multi-axial steering via the X-shaped control surfaces at the boat's stern, which, when combined with the traditional dive planes on the sail, will increase the boat's maneuverability underwater without a gain in propulsive force. Theoretically, anyhow. The nuclear power plant will be state-of-the-art and will not need refueling during the expected lifetime of the boat, unlike the Ohio class which needed to be taken off the line and disassembled for refueling halfway through their service lives. All of these advancements will combine into a boat that should be able to carry out 124 deterrent patrols over its 42-year expected lifetime, or roughly three patrols a year, each lasting three months, allowing for a one-month servicing period between departures. With the Chinese surging the manufacturing of their own submarine fleets, it is vitally important that the Americans maintain their combat deterrent edge beneath the waves, particularly in the Pacific Ocean and South China Sea, where the next international conflict is likely to kick off. Yes, while the Russians have started to become unruly again and more militarily aggressive than they have been since the fall of the former Soviet Union, the country simply does not have enough cash to build many new ballistic missile submarines but they are spending considerable resources on creating new SLBM types and torpedoes that make up for this shortfall, so America can't take their eyes off the Bore boats and what they bring to the nuclear equation.